Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Today we're getting into a trailer breakdown. So it's the third trailer that got released. With it, when we got supplied it by Warner Brothers, we were sent a letter, an invitation from the SOS. Dear member of the wizarding community, as you may be aware, the Ministry of Magic and the International Confederation of Wizards have partnered together to form the Statute of Secrecy Task Force. Our purpose is to investigate and contain a worldwide calamity that has caused chaotic traces of magic to occur in the Muggle world. So it's what we already know that it's going to probably be based around. We also did thought like, we wondered if the calamity was a organization or whether it was just a calamity in itself, in definition of the word. And the fact that it says a worldwide calamity probably like leans toward that calamity are not like a secret organization. It's just there's a calamity going on. Due to our knowledge of wizardry, you have been selected by the SOS task force for an assignment of the utmost importance. So I'm thinking this has been is gonna go out to everybody who signed up. Um, I don't know if everybody's got access to it yet though. The latest of these traces of magic caused by the calamity. Oh, actually, maybe is the maybe the calamity is maybe it is a a thing. Maybe it is an organization. A discombobulated Niffler that has been seen by Muggle children in an arcade in Britain. Uh, I watched Pokemon his video. Britain, just so, say, for future reference, you were right, Britain is not London. Great Britain is like UK, Scotland, and a little bit of Ireland. I think it's Northern Ireland. One of the islands, there's Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. One of them isn't in Great Britain, but collected, we are Great Britain. If you could like lay the England flag on top of the Scotland flag, I think it creates the Union Jack. Great Britain. Um, so this was recorded in Britain, which means we've gone from London to Australia and we're coming back to Great Britain. So they've recorded this one in Britain as well, which is nice because, I mean, like, you got to stay true to the films. It's very much UK based, but it is nice that they're going to other locations and see what's going on there. So I'd like to see a little bit more of that. Uh, we ask that you take this latest evidence of the calamity and use Muggle technology to quickly and effectively alert the magical community. So I think actually it might just be sent to us from anybody who's in the press, related to the press site. So there's YouTubers like Poker Fodder. Um, we've got Expecto Go, they're involved. Uh, there's um, they've got in touch with German channels, so it's, it's a lot of people that potentially are going to be able to disseminate this, I mean, this 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 bit of these trailers, and it's quite nice to to have like a personal layer. I think that's a nice touch. <laughs> Right, so now you've seen the trailer, let's break it down bit by bit. So the scene starts in a typical arcade, something you would see in Britain. And we have, it looks very old fashioned though. I mean, it's a very old school. We've got like parasols on the right. Um, got weird like, are they floaty balloons in the right as well? We have what looks like, a, is it a hockey table or is it foosball table there? With the kid in the left playing that. We have a typical kind of like um, arcade games in the back. It looks like it's on a boat. Because you've got you've got like holes that you would usually see in a boat. So whether it's just some like funky arcade that's set on a boat. So I'm, I'm questioning whether this is something that exists. Or whether this is something that was created, um, you know, from scratch. They brought in... One of the things that kind of helps makes you think that is that if we go a little bit further, we can see that there is a niffle in there with galleon-like coins. Now, you wouldn't really see them. You definitely wouldn't see a machine like this with coins on like that. You would usually see 
typically, I don't know if they have any of these in other countries, but this is a very UK, like seaside based. You go to seaside and there's an arcade outside and these would have coins, so like two P's usually. If you're going like all expensive, like 10 P's. But what you would also have on top of those two P's is like little prizes here and there. So sometimes money, sometimes some little, usually just some crappy key rings. So I think this is, you know, they bought a machine and they filled it with like galleon like machines for going and going like coins for effect to kind of have that wizarding world touch on it unless you you would only really see these tokens being used to like trade for prizes um and you but i don't yeah you wouldn't see that in it in arcade basically though next we see the ministry of magic clock turning to the third green so not a serious threat still level one next one would be level two we see the Rapello Muggleton sign, this time signed by Madilda Grindle Hall. Then it goes into trace number 102, Discombobulated Niffler. So the first trace that we've had of a Fantastic Beast. So if we remember, the numbers 2000 was trace number 74. So it looks like they're going to have this running theme of labeling different things as 102. The fact that it's a Discombobulated Niffler as well, maybe that we you know, find different varieties of Niffler. It might be we see a happy Niffler, see like a mischievous Niffler, a discombobulated Niffler, or it might just be it is a Niffler, but this one happens to be very discombobulated. Next, just as we saw in previous trailers, we have witnesses, young muggles, mistaking the subject for a highly realistic battery operated toy. So at this point, the, the young muggles are just thinking, yeah, this, this can't be real. It's just a very, very clever battery operated toy inside an arcade machine. Because that happens all the time in UK. The prizes are not that advanced. You would not see that. So these are very, very stupid muggles. Stupid muggles. Damage done. Galleon like coins are missing. Presumed stolen. Bogged by Constance Duqueney this time so changing log to her instead of Mathilda Grindelhawk um, interesting so we go back to the arcade machine and the Niffler in the cutest way ever like I love Nifflers right? I love Nifflers and it's hiccuping it's hiccuping coins guys this is super cute and probably the, be the best thing I've seen this year. Now, one of the things to notice is that if you hear in the background, there is a certain like music playing. And again, I don't know if this is a British thing or whether any other countries recognize that theme. It's basically like, I do like to be beside the seaside. Oh, I do like to be beside the sea, which is a very popular kind of, every English person will know that that tune is associated with the seaside. So it kind of gives some clues as this is at a seaside. Confirming what I said before is that you typically do find arcades by the seaside. You know, whether this is a real arcade, I don't know, it may be just based somewhere. So if you recognize it and you are from the UK, let me know. Um, I know Zielman, uh, Mark Zielman, who does Zielman's Wizarding World now, um, he actually went to visit the first place where the trailer was shot. So it'll be interesting to see if we can find this. If you recognize it, let me know for sure. Would I travel there? Maybe, who knows. So it carries on. The Niffler keeps on hiccuping and just looks as with the cutest face in the world. And we go to a stamp where we saw in the the, 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 the second trailer with a Nif with a uh, Nimbus 2000. We see a very interesting thing where we've got another gesture. So this gesture isn't something that I've been able to, you know, find. It looks like a very unique one. Now, it's, a, it's your typical what looks like a one gesture, and which is you know, probably how you catch a different or fight different um, you know, magical artifacts and thing and, and creatures that you're finding. Uh, but you're like, you know, that's a, gives me a list of some of the most popular ones. But I haven't found anything around this, and I think this is kind of demonstrating that they are putting new magical gestures that may not fit with canon. Um, but again, like we don't know of a, I've looked up and you can't find a discombobulated, discombobulate charm. And so it may be that it is something just, it is a charm, but it's not very, it doesn't have one gesture for it yet. So they've just created it, which would be all right. Threat level is level two. So moderate, so not severely threatening. You know, if you read Fantastic Beasts um, and where to find them book, 
which is really good. Definitely recommend it. Um, you'll see that Nithlas aren't actually very threatening. And obviously in the film, not very really threatening, but they can just be dangerous to, you know, property and shiny things because they will steal them because they lured the shiny things and don't have them in a house, apparently. That, that's messy. Now, the most interesting thing about this page is not the Niffler, not the one gesture, but the registry on the right. So we can see here there are nine different, ten, ten different symbols that, as we go on, you'll see that the paw prints of the sixth one down get stamped. And we've seen this the snitch before being stamped across the threat level for the Nimbus 2000. Now... This is exciting because it means that we're probably going to find not just traces of magical artifacts, not just traces of magical creatures, but also things that these all represent. And I'm going to go through them bit by bit and just kind of describe my thoughts on what they could mean. So the Snitch and the Nimbus 2000 both are magical sporting artifacts. So in terms of they have magical artifacts, but they are specific to sports. And that snitch may represent sporting magical artifacts. So I'm thinking like your snitch, like your brooms, but also things like bludgers, which could be, you know, have quite a, a high threat level because, you know, they, they would that would hurt a lot if that hit you. Quaffles may be very low threat, but who knows? They may be wandering around on their own with some magic behind them. So it could, I think it will indicate that because I don't think magical artifacts would be covered just by the snitch. Being that we've got such a big registry here of 10, I think other other ones could, other, other different like logos could, you know, fit for different other different art, magical artifacts that we're going to face. So the second one looks like a wand casting some form of charm and... I think this is going to be if we've got traces of magic being cast. So if I was to cast Serpent Sortier, that would create loads of snakes. And maybe if that was a trace, so a ton of snakes, that would be stamped with the second registry logo uh, because it's a charm. Now, when we look at the third one, it's pretty key. It's a, it's a, it's a lock and where you would put a key in. This is a very exciting one for me. I think this could represent treasure it could represent chambers secrets cursed vaults so i'm thinking perhaps these could hold magical artifacts that you you want to find rare traces i'm thinking a treasure where you might be able to open and get certain rewards like your equivalent like your pokeballs or lucky eggs or things in pokemon go that you really want just like not you're not gaining any like Pokemon, but you're gaining things that will help you catch things that will boost your experience level, boost the attack that you can boost your creatures up by. So I think it will probably have some treasure element, which is amazing because there's so many magical artifacts that can do so many different things. If, you, if you've seen the magical artifacts video, tons. So that has a big scope for, you know, a lot of exciting things in it. The fourth one down is the Ministry of Magic logo. Well, as to what this could represent, I'm not sure. It could represent certain missions that the Ministry of Magic sends you on as part of the uh, Statue of Secrecy Task Force. Um, so it, it may be information gathering, things like that. I don't think that's going to be anything too exciting. The fifth one down, though, a little bit more. So this is clearly a skull. And skulls represent death and, you know extreme danger usually so i think this is going to represent not magical beasts but potentially things like dementors uh death eaters things that could threaten your life in a wizarding world that don't have a a creature basis but actually the wizards and witches around you that are dark and use magic like crucio so something that are on the lines of i think i think they, sh they they could have death eaters as a magical trace and you don't obviously you there things you want to stop grindelwald is trying to you know he'd be right behind all these uh but right behind the calamity he'd probably be leading it so you got you got to believe that there are other wizards who believe like him that 
the wizarding world should be known to all muggles and maybe even go as far to say that they should be they should overthrow and it should be their world and you know muggles are cast aside to hide and live in random you know alleyways that are hidden so maybe so as the uh trace 102 is logged we get a stamp on the the port which will represent magical creatures right um anything like a niffler a chisperful a crop something that isn't as threatening but is a, a magical creature then the next one though is what represents probably higher threat level creatures so you're probably talking your dragons griffins just turn to a random page and find another one a nundu it's, a, it's, a, it's like a giant african leopard it's huge it's like the size of a thunderbird so anything that is rare and dangerous i think will be falling under that stamp of the claw-like paw definitely not dragon-like or a griffin like um a thunderbird could be any of those really then next we have nine and three quarters nine and three quarters is the station to which you can get the hogwarts express so i think this represents travel i don't think it represents the the nine and three quarters platform i think it just represents anything associated with transport or travel this is also very exciting because it could mean you know the magical bus it could mean portals, port keys, other forms of magical transport, Hagrid's cool little motorbike, or the Weasley's flying car. It could represent those things, and the way this could work is for things that maybe you find port keys that are in the, uh, the, the Muggle world, and perhaps they could take you to different places. Perhaps it could be a clan feature where you can invite friends, put down a port key, and they could come visit you in your location and help you fight threats. That could be really, really good. So I'm excited for that. I think I think don't think it represents the actual nine three quarters platform because well you'd only be able to go there in real life in in London. Next we have a six pointed star a hexagram. Now what does this probably represent? I'm thinking something along the lines of divination. Um, so like yeah what Professor Trelawney teaches. So this is being able to read like tea leaves and things and predict the future. Um, how this is going to be, be, you know, implemented into the game, I'm really not sure. That is one that I don't have any theories. I'd really like to hear your guys' suggestions as what do you think, how would divination play a part in the Wizarding World in, in Wizards Unite? And then finally, we have the Hogwarts h for hogwarts logo so i don't think we're gonna see hogwarts in the game it might be that it's a location that you can travel to um but it's quite a big you know if it's an ar based game and it's based in the real world i don't think they're gonna see we're gonna see too much complexity like hogwarts mystery has hogwarts and then they've broken down the different levels but quite a complex task i don't think they're going to implement that but it may represent something like i'm thinking house missions if we do get you know houses as our defining teams so it could be that they're like gryffindor specific missions or helping build your your house points up things like that but i think they've got to be very careful about how they implement that because obviously we're not at hogwarts maybe that it's related to any hogwarts staff members or things like that anything associated with hogwarts Traces of magic. What are things are specific to that? The sorting hat. Things like that. Anything like that that might be associated with the Hogwarts school itself could fall under that in the registry. What this all means though, that's 10 different registry stamps. We've already seen two of them and that means that there's probably going to be more that fall under other traces. This means this game is going to have a lot of complexity. A lot more than just magical beasts and magical artifacts. And that for me is the most exciting thing that we've got from this trailer. No I'm joke, I can't say it. I'm sorry. The Niffler is the best thing from this trailer. Look how cute it is, right? <laughs> so that is all for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my breakdown and speculation around it. I'd definitely like to hear what you guys think about it. Let me know in the comment section below. 
Well, that's all for this one. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. And if you have, please hit the like button and hit subscribe if you want to keep up to date with any future content. I am affiliated now with Warner Brothers and they are sending these, these trailers and updates to me before they drop them. So if you want to keep in the know about the game every time something drops, be sure to subscribe to the channel. That's all for this one. See you guys soon.